Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo. Clive Paxton speaking. Mother here. I need you, Paxton. Oh, uh, oh yes, sir. Uh, of course, sir. My headquarters. Uh, yes, sir. Where, sir? I've been forced to take refuge in an impregnable spot, somewhere where no one can get at me. Yes, sir. Take another 12 bus to Westminster Bridge, a riverboat down to Traitor's Gate. I've incarcerated at the tower. Come immediately. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 1 of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel are directed by Mother to investigate a curious case. A case where several wanted men have managed to... ...escape in time. It was a cold, blustery, grey, wet morning. An easterly wind drove the gulls across the Thames... They cawed in the air as they circled over the choppy water. Secretaries in offices switched on electric heaters. Housewives decided against doing the washing or even the shopping. Executives thumbed through their correspondence and thought longingly of a pub lunch. In the Tower of London, Mother, in his wheelchair, drew a rug around his legs, shivered a little, and poured himself a brandy. Purely medicinal, very necessary. Hard to believe that they had to chop people's heads off in the olden times. I should have thought they would have all died of cold. You may enter. Ah, Paxton, come in. It is a dreary day, forsooth. <clears throat> you must excuse the language, but in these surroundings, one is rather tempted to think back into the past. So much history and all that. A glass of mead? A guy in brandy? Uh, no, thank you, Mother. Yeah, well, now, I have a job for you. Normally, I would have handed it over to Steed and Mrs. Peel, but they've been uh, slightly overworked lately. I shall be pleased to undertake anything, Mother. Mm. What you undertake may lead thee to the undertaker, uh, uh, if you understand my meaning. Oh, that's always the risk of the job, isn't it? Uh, quite. Well, now... We have reason to believe that several nefarious characters who have been absconding with fortunes made from selling government secrets have conveniently disappeared. Here is a list. <clears throat> I can give you but one clue. There's a man called Tayson mentioned. No one knows who he is or where he is, or even if he exists. If you find him, report immediately. Here, take this file. And stay not upon your going, but get cracking now. The Tayson home was 16th century. The whole estate appeared deserted. The house, set back in well-kept grounds, was rather forbidding. Clive Paxton, eager to please, had spent many hours before tracing it. When he did, he found, surprisingly enough, the front door open. He entered and walked down the main corridor. It had plinths on either side. There were busts, heads of the Tayson family, all dated. 1635 to 1586. Edwin, 1605 to 1649. Bruno. Hmm. Door. Where does it lead? Clive Paxton opened the door and stepped very cautiously into a corridor. It was in the shape of a tunnel. It seemed to start spinning. Lights flashed. The noise grew. 
Paxton felt his senses beginning to fail him. He swayed, staggered, and slowly sank to the ground unconscious. When Paxton woke, he looked about him with amazement. A figure in Elizabethan dress stood up from behind a heavy desk. He moved forward, a hooded falcon perched on his wrist. He reached down to the desk and picked up a pistol. He said, Good night, sweet prince. <gasps> the rest is silence. <laughs> In Emma Peel's apartment later that day, John Steed was winning in a game of cribbage. 15-2, 15-4, and one for his knob. Out. <sighs> you're too good for me, Steed. Do you suppose it's because you're so much older? Ah, well, there's no substitute for experience, Mrs. Peel. And, of course, intelligence like breeding will out. Mm. I wonder how much luck figures in it. Not very much. We, Steeds, can trace our ancestry back through the ages. Oh. Unqualified success over the centuries. Now, for instance, bold black steed was a buccaneer. Then there was smooth, savage steed, a smuggler who practically put Cornwall on the map. Samuel Steed was the original surveyor of the Duke of Buckingham. Uh, Shakespeare didn't give him his real name in the play of Henry VIII, but that's who he was. We steeds can be held in good stead. Methinks the bell doth toll. Mm. Oh, don't bother to get up. I'll answer it. Mistress Peel? Stop clowning about, Mrs. I want you and Steed here in the tower within 15 minutes, or I'll have your guts like artists. Got it? I got it, Mother. Ah, good morrow and well met. You come most timely upon the hour. Here, Steed, Mrs. Peel, this should keep out the cold. Oh, thank you, Mother. Thanks, sir. <clears throat> But bleak, isn't it? Your new headquarters, I mean. Uh, I did ask for central heating, but they said it would destroy the character of the place and might affect the luster of the crown jewels. One has to think of the American tourists sometimes, you know. Oh, of course. Uh, what's the panic, Mother? Uh, no panic, just a death. Clive Paxton. Paxton? One of our best agents? Uh, rather was one of our best. What are the details? I gave him a case. I regret to say I feel he wasn't ready for it. He was fished out of the Thames early this morning, at 3.45 a.m., to be precise. Obviously dumped. Obviously? Mm, obviously. He was drunk? He was shot with this. Mother reached out a hand and picked up a gun from the nearby table. He held it delicately and handed it to Mrs. Peel. Mrs. Peel studied it intently. A 16th century gun of medium caliber? Probably a sporting piece used exclusively by noblemen in the Elizabethan period. Well, with that answer, you gain ten points and your team goes into the lead. Hmm. It's a strange weapon to use. You sure that Paxton was killed with this? The ballistics men have already confirmed it. And it wasn't self-inflicted. A man who puts a bullet through his brain doesn't live long enough to place the pistol back in his pocket. It's curiously archaic. Maybe. But the problem we are faced with is bang up to date. All through history to the present day, there have been notorious criminals... The miscreants, evildoers. Men who commit crimes and try to evade the law. Men on the run. Uh, exactly. Yeah. The case that Paxton was investigating was just that. Men who, wanted by the law, are on the run one minute and who disappear the next. Hmm. Someone must have devised an escape route for them. It most certainly looks that way. Now, here <clears throat> is a file. It gives the background to all of the men involved. Take it with you. Study it. And get on with the job. Paxton was obviously onto something. Don't end up the way he did. We'll try not to, Mother. Oh, cursed spite that Steed was ever born to put it right. Come, Mrs. Peel, let us go together. Back in John Steed's apartment, Mrs. Peel made coffee and got a hasty snack. Over it, they studied the file. <clears throat> Hmm. Well, this seems to indicate that the first one to go was Karl Bleschner, the German financier. He ran off with half a million. Embezzled the government. Let me see his photograph. Hmm. This is a very greedy face. Hmm. Here's an even greedier one. Pierre Gaspel, a French bank robber. He disappeared with a cool million. Nasty. Ah, now here is a face full of avarice. 
Reminds me of an auntie of mine. This one needs no introduction. President B.B. Jim. Arrived at his election headquarters, took off his hat. Took off his coat. And took off with the party funds. I wonder what happened to B.B. Jim. No one knows. They all disappeared. None of these notorious criminals has ever been found. Neither they nor their ill-gotten gains. And even more strange, they all disappeared here in England. Last seen heading for these shores and wham, vanished as though they'd never been. You know, Miss Mrs. Peel, that in the past most men sneaked off to South America. Not these days. Here, Louis de Madraga, a South American who comes here to escape. Odds bodkins, but tis indeed mighty curious. Now there's a face that's evil, if ever I saw one. You out of your mind? That's Tubby Vincent. He's on our side. How the devil did he get mixed up in this? How Tubby Vincent got involved was almost a similar story to that of Clive Paxton. He was an agent who got a clue about the home of Tyson's. He also investigated, walking down the main corridor, noting all the plinths with the molded heads of the Tyson family. Bill, 1535 to 1586. Edwin, 1605 to 1649. Hmm, this door. I'll try this door. Tubby Vincent entered the room. It was all Jacobean, like stepping back into the past. He stopped and gazed about him. A voice said, Dead. Dead for a ducat. <coughs> Tubby Vincent reeled under the blow of a knife, but recovered enough to stagger back into the corridor and slam the door. He lurched up the corridor, out into the dusk and safety. And later, in Steed's apartment, the game of cribbage went on. Fifteen two, fifteen four, and one for Tubby's knob. All right, I'll get it. Steed, my Steed. Steed? Steed, what is it? Tubby. It's Tubby Vincent. Tubby, can you hear me? Can you can you tell me who, who did this to you? Steed, it's all, all in the... Past. No, no time. Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omen.